Welcome to Spiritual Dialogue with Father Udon de Castro. We are here at Cariana Lay Monastic Community. I'm your host, Brother Lodi, and with me is Sister Tachi. I was just thinking about the, the statement, go to the desert, Father. Many people will not understand what the for us, desert is just somewhere, somewhere nowhere. <laughs> I mean, for most people. Hmm. So I guess we have to explain. You have to explain that, Father. Yes, um, the desert is a mystical term. Okay. In the teaching of Christ, the desert is compared to His saying when He says, "When you pray, go to your room and lock the door." Mm -hmm. and so on, okay. and that's a desert. Mm -hmm. okay. It's just going to your room, locking the door, which means just remove all the kinds of uh, distractions from your, your mind and then pray to God directly. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a very special place like going to the desert and so on. Mm -hmm. But you know, probably during the early times, uh, homes did not have private rooms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they cannot go to the room and lock the door. Everybody mm -hmm. was sleeping in dormitories and so on like that. So the first monks really went to the desert to have that um, solitude and silence that was needed like that. But in short, desert simply means that don't let any worldly thing enter your mind and your heart and let your mind and heart be raised to God. That's the mm -hmm. desert. And you can do that anything. And St. Catherine of Siena was always described as someone who was walking around with a desert. Mm. So she had the desert with her anywhere mm -hmm. she went. So anytime she wanted to pray, she would just go to the desert, mm -hmm. which is within her. Mm -hmm. So that is the desert. And you may notice now, the Feast of St. John the Baptist is given to us in this time, 11th week of ordinary time, after Pentecost, wherein the training of the apostles were perfected. And oh. that was before Christ sent them to go forth and preach. In other words, preachers should be perfect in faith with some degree of charity. And I say some degree of charity because charity cannot be perfected here on earth. Yes. It can only be perfected in heaven. And nobody should preach without perfect faith and some degree of charity because faith means you know all the teachings of Jesus Christ, which are all in the supernatural level. So you need grace to know the teachings of Christ. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of preacher. How do we know that they have perfect faith so that we will follow what they said? It's a little hard, but um, they describe it as when the speaker speaks, there is fire in your heart. Like the two disciples of Emmaus, yeah. when Christ was preaching to them, they would feel that there was warmth or fire in their heart. They're, they said, didn't we feel our hearts were mm. afire? And so on like that. So that would be the sign. If the preacher is just entertaining you, you can be sure it's oh. a fake preacher. He's just there to entertain you and probably get your contribution and donations and so on like that. So the word that comes from the, uh, from the uh, preacher should uh, somehow affect your heart. It so should inflame, they say. Inflame, inflame your heart. You know, which is hard to describe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It could be heart burns. Yeah. <laughs> inflame the heart to uh, love of God, I guess, not to any inflame it to do something else. It yeah, could, something it like could that. inflame, right? Yeah. To be, be to, to be, be so holy. Because oh, yes, yeah, yes, so, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> it could in, it could do that in yeah. another direction. Yeah, heart, heart burns. <laughs> 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 yeah, heart burns. So uh, we were discussing about the teachers teaching the wrong things, and because their training is very bad. Mm -hmm. They were really incompetent teachers. Sometimes you cannot, you cannot blame them because they were trained badly yes. since the Council of Trent and because they were trained badly, so they teach badly. What's wrong with them is we cannot tell them they have no fault because they should have suspected there was something wrong in the way they're teaching. 
because the graduates were not holy priests. They should notice that. Father, you, you mean to say if I, if I were teaching cor properly, this, this, the, the graduates would be holy? Yeah, of course, should be. Okay, should be. Yeah, it should be, yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's, that's the purpose of convents, you know. <laughs> I, I, yes, yes. That, but, and but, monasteries to but, produce holy people. So in other Father, even in such a short time, there, it can oh, be yes, done. Oh, yes, of course. So, it, so, yes. We mentioned St. Paul was holy in a matter of uh, minutes. That's true. Yeah. So it can be done. It it's can. It's just proper. Okay. <laughs> So. Why? Because holiness is just an act of the mind and the free will. Uh, and that true. doesn't take time for you to think and to love something. Like you, Brother Lodi, if I give you a nice dish, what's mm. your favorite dish? Tagalog. Pap uh, pap papaitan, probably. Okay. okay. So, uh, Adobo. <laughs> if you like that, you look at it and you love it right away. Yes, because you, lo you, you love the food, you like the food. Okay, which means you can love something very fast. I see, okay. Uh, it doesn't yes. take time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How much more loving God? God is better than food. You can love God faster than loving food. And that precisely is the very essence of holiness, to love God. But there is problem within our heart, within ourselves. The conflict between the flesh and the spirit. Yes, there is really a problem wherein the flesh is always against the spirit. Yes. But you have a free will to choose the spirit. Hmm. There is a problem. There is um, somebody preventing you from loving God, but you're free. Mm -hmm. You have the freedom not to love the flesh and to love the spirit. So we have no excuse. And would you say the teachers is looking? Usually, and we're not talking about, about the ones learning, no. But they come in disposed. That's why you enter the monastery. You're disposed to want. You, you want to love God. You want to serve Him. So the teachers at the moment will look at the teachers. Could have easily, if they gave the right teachings. Ah uh, yes. Could have easily because the the, pe the people that came, has, most of them has a proper, proper disposition. Disposition already. That's oh. right. Mm. So it is their fault in that sense. It is really their fault. No? And of course, the lack of encouragement. Because from? Christ, from, from the leaders in the seminary, the Are you teachers, talking about the students now? and okay, so on yes. like that. Mm -hmm. Because Christ always encouraged them. In other words, mm -hmm. Christ also pushed them towards perfection of faith. Yeah. So in other words, the teachers, you really need not only to teach, but to encourage. You, yeah. you, you, a mm -hmm. lot is expected. Of the teacher. Like Christ saw Thomas having a hard time yeah. believing, so he went there and showed his yeah. hands, his side, and yes. so on. Uh, th that's what spiritual directors are for in the first yeah. place, you know, and, and rectors of seminary and so on like that. But like we said, all of them did not know what to do. They did not know how to be good teachers, good preachers. They did not know what to teach. That was a problem. No? But I'm not excusing them because... Um, Joseph Rusinger studied in those kinds of seminary. Same. He studied in Tubingen, uh -huh. which is a Protestant seminary. Mm -hmm. And he was learning the wrong things there. Mm -hmm. He learned phenomenology, which was the wrong thing, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. heretical. So he was learning the wrong thing in Tubingen, but when he became Pope, his theology was almost perfect. What happened? What happened for him? Self-study. Uh, because he really wanted to know the truth. He wanted to be holy. He wanted to save souls. So he studied on his own. It is like uh, going to the desert, I mean, going to your inner self. Something like that. Like he's a master of St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. They were not teaching St. Augustine in Tubingen. Mm -hmm. yes. It was self-study. Mm -hmm. Also, St. Bonaventure was never taught in Tubingen. They were teaching Protestant theologians, not St. Bonaventure. But Pope Benedict has mastered St. Bonaventure. How? On his own. Okay. Self-study. So the defect with our priests and bishops is they lack self-study. They were so contented with the practically nothing that they learned in the seminary. Then they passed it on. They're nothing. 
Of course. When you have nothing, there's nothing to pass on. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, Father, when you mentioned about Jesus, he did, so just studying Jesus' life. Yeah, everything is there you in could, scriptures. You could yeah. have, you know, like you said, he encouraged the apostles, you know, he taught them when, he, when they were feeling, you know, they sort of missed out and then he'd come. And I mean, all that is just, it, it's not so difficult. No, no, it's not really difficult. But they never thought about it. Because the second part of your training is based on grace, so it's not and difficult. That's Dina, yes, yes, yes of course. It's going to be very, very So the easy. first... Oh, the first is just repentance. That's okay. a little difficult okay. because nobody likes okay. to admit their sins, you know. <laughs> so you expect, so you, what you're saying, Father, is that life of repentance it should have been in the seminaries too. That's the first step when that's you the enter the step. seminary. So that's like the de it could have been a desert. I, the the uh, seminary. monastery. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or did the seminary supposed to, to be, be a, a desert? It's yeah. supposed to be like a monastery. Yeah, exactly. And I see, okay, Father, so they come in, disposed, but they should have been taught the life of the, the repentance. Yeah. Because they didn't come in like innocent children, no? Because uh, you should have the proper atmosphere of the desert. So that should have been the seminary. That should be, which is no longer present in the seminary these days. Yeah. Mm, no, yes. I was thinking whether uh, the idea of conversion comes first, uh, is it by uh, by the individual or by by circumstances, Father? Well, conversion is a work of God. It does not come uh, to the individual on his own. It never. It's an act of grace, conversion. And the way to foster conversion in a person is by repentance. Repentance can be done, humanly speaking. You can repent by yourself mm -hmm. because it simply means think of your past sins and being sorry for them. And that will lead you to something, uh, something very good. Then God will give you the grace and you get converted. So the repentance doesn't need the grace yet. I mean, it, it has a natural it's disposition, kind, yeah, a little some, bit, but that's, an, that's not completely dependent yet. Yeah, so it can it be done. Actual grace, they call it actual okay. grace. It can yeah. be done by yeah. anyone. Yeah, anyone, anyone. Okay. Mm. So, so Father, if they, if they entered the seminary and were taught, I don't think they were taught Properly, I don't think to, to yeah. go into repentance. I never heard that in the seminaries. No, they never taught that. No, they, but I, I got books here. You open your books, okay? It's like a school. Yeah, that, that's the trouble. Yeah. That's why the defect now is that the teachers were not teaching properly. The seminaries were not studying properly. So everybody would graduate knowing nothing. And the teachers also died, grow old, knowing nothing. You know? And, and so, Father, yeah, yes. And that's since you're saying, uh, since after the Council of Trent. Would you say, Father, what was the Council of Trent that such destroyed such... No, the Council of Trent did not destroy. It was trying to solve the problem. Okay, and then, so you talk, you're just like a landmark, in other words. Yes, it's mm -hmm. a very important council. Okay. In the Council of Trent, what they did was they noticed that the seminary were teaching the wrong things, mm. So they corrected what was wrong. Okay, so that should be... That's very good. Okay, yeah. so... So they corrected all the doctrines so that doctrines can be taught properly. Okay. But the teachers were not teaching the doctrines that has been corrected. It's corrected already. Oh, so they all you have to do is just... Correct. Teach it properly. Yeah, properly. Did not teach it properly still. Right. And the reason is what Brother Lodi says. They were not following the example of Christ when they were teaching the doctrine. Because remember, Christ was teaching correct doctrines. Yeah. He was yes. Christ. Mm. But many could not understand him. Mm. The disciples understood him, but the people, most of the people, did not understand him. So how come? That could happen. So all the spiritual teaching must be based on what Christ uh, wants to, un to understand. It uh, must be teach. based on the teachers exactly. and the students. <laughs> you see, Christ was preaching perfectly. Mm. But the listeners were not listening properly. Okay. So it has to be both. It has to be both. No. But at yeah. least if some, if some of the students, if, so, if the teachers were right, like, like Christ, you could have had some good seminarians. If everything was uh, taught, taught properly. properly, 
there would have been at least a half handful. of the seminary. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. yes, yes. Plenty, not only a handful, yeah, really plenty. Ha- plenty yeah. but, but nothing. Yeah. But yeah. Like, it could. Um, okay. We have only 30 seconds. But so there we have the, um, we're still with the first problem in the seminary. And uh, we will show you that in the seminaries now, both problem exists that the teachers are not teaching properly, and the students are not learning properly, and that's the cause of all the confusion and the crisis in the Catholic Church today. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you for watching Spiritual Dialogue with Father Don Nicastro. Next episode, Father will continue explaining the correct teaching uh, we must, uh, people should uh, do. Thank you very much.